iOS 17 is shaping up to be one of Apple's best updates in years, but how many of these features will actually impact your life? I've been using the new update every day since early June, and these are some of the real world use cases, as well as a few things that are missing from iOS 17. First up, iMessage gets some really nice new features with a redesigned app menu and things like swipe to reply. Group chats also work better now if there's a non-Apple device in the group, and they added a lot of customization for stickers, which now support your own photo and emojis. The true hidden gem new feature for iMessage, however, is the all new check-in feature, which allows you to send someone an automated check-in prompt that will notify them as soon as you reach your destination. The next feature is something I haven't seen too many people talk about, which is the new level feature within the iOS 17 camera app. While this is a feature that's been around on other phones for quite some time now, I can honestly say that I'm using this just about every single time I take a photo now. You'll notice a lot of the strengths in iOS 17 are in the small details and this is one of my favorites so far. Another big feature people have been asking for is offline maps within Apple Maps, and I'm happy to say not only is it finally here, it's really good. I've used it for hiking and have a giant map of my area downloaded, so even if I have no reception, I'm covered. This is also really nice if you have a non-cellular iPad and want to use a bigger screen to navigate. Now, the new proximity-based airdrop features are a bit of a party trick, but they'll be a big hit once the mass public is running iOS 17 or later. The ability to instantly airdrop or trade contact info will be really useful, but I think it'll be a few months after the update releases before you'll notice people using it much. One feature you will notice immediately is the ability to simply say Siri to activate the voice assistant without needing the hey before it. This might sound like a small thing, but I find the interaction feels way more natural, and Siri also listens for follow-up questions with context-based replies now too. It still has a long way to go before it's great, but the updates here are a step in the right direction. Direction. Standby mode is an amazing new feature in iOS 17 that I use at my desk every single day, but it's not perfect. If you have an iPhone 14 Pro or newer, the always on display keeps the information on the screen at all times, but this isn't the case for older devices. I do wish that all supported devices could display the info without going into sleep mode since they're already charging, but it's probably unlikely to happen. This feature is one of the best additions in years though, so I'm excited to see them add more to it over time. Last but not least, Apple Music is way better in iOS 17 with the new full screen animated album art and crossfade features. I still think that Spotify has better recommendations and overall UI, but Apple Music is catching up quickly and with things like lossless audio, it's much closer to 50-50 now in my opinion. Now there are a few things missing that Apple announced for iOS 17 that I hope will be here soon. At WWDC, they announced an all new journal app that will focus on documenting your life through your photos, locations you travel, and even workouts, but it won't be ready right at launch. They also announced a new feature for the AirPods Pro called Adaptive Audio, which can dynamically adjust your music in real world conditions for a balanced listening experience. Both of these features weren't present in the betas, so keep an eye out for them in the near future. Overall, my time using iOS 17 so far has been lovely, and I think over time, these features are going to blend into our daily lives before you know it. If you've made it this far into the video, post your favorite iOS 17 feature in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and subscribe for more tech videos soon. Take care.